I greet you in Jesus' precious name. It's just so good to be with you again. I have a special message for you today. Maybe somebody watching this program is feeling a bit down. You say, Angus, how can God use me? I've got no education. I never had the privilege of going to university. In fact, I hardly even went to school. I'm out of work. I feel absolutely wasted and lost. Stop right there, sir. Stop right there, madam, young lady. God chooses the base things of this world to work through. That's right. He chooses the nobodies. He chooses ordinary people like you and me. And most of us have messed up sometime in our lives. That's right. He chose a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus to write two-thirds of, of this book. He was on his way to Damascus to persecute the Christians. I mean, what an unlikely character to use to bring the gospel to the whole world. He used a blaspheming fisherman. That's a man that swore. He used him. He used Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector, and so on and so forth. God uses whoever puts their hand up. And I pray that you're going to do that today. Doesn't matter that you've got no education. Doesn't matter that you can't uh, read. All right. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is to tell other people what Jesus means to you. That's preaching. If we look at um, 1 Corinthians, the book of 1 Corinthians and chapter 1, and verse 28, just one verse, this is what it says. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are. And verse 29 says that no flesh should glory in His presence. That's why God doesn't use a lot of famous people. I'm talking about celebrities, prima donnas. He doesn't use them. You know why, folks? Because they will touch His glory. He uses somebody like you. Hopefully somebody like me. Who nobody really cares anything about. And He uses us to bring the gospel message. He took 12 men that were basically nobodies. And changed the world, the whole world. Isn't that amazing? So there's hope for you, my friend. Don't let the devil tell you that you're washed up because you've made a mistake. Maybe you've been divorced. Maybe you've been to jail. Maybe you're in jail. Serve your sentence. Go out into the world and tell people what Jesus means to you. You see, the wisest man in the world was Solomon. God gave him amazing ability. I want to tell you a quick story as we close. Solomon was confronted by two women once. They were both prostitutes. Both women had had a baby born within a couple of days of each other. They lived in the same house. They slept in the same bedroom. And the one night, the one mother rolled over on her little baby and the baby died because it was suffocated. So there was one baby left. The two women came. They were arguing about, this is my baby. No, it's my baby. They went to Solomon. They said to Solomon, this baby is mine. And she said, no, it's mine. So what did Solomon do? He said, bring me a sword. He said, I'm going to cut this baby in half and then I'll give you half each. The true mother, the true mother said, no, no, don't do that, Lord. Give the baby to the other woman. And the other woman who was not the true mother said, yes, cut the baby in half and then we'll have half each. You see, she was exposed. Straight away, Solomon knew who the true mother was. She was the woman that didn't want any knife to cut her child. And so they were able to give the baby to the true mother. That kind of wisdom you don't learn in university. You learn that through spending time with God. Job chapter 28, verse 28. The fear of God, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil, that is understanding. Goodbye. We trust that you have been blessed by today's message. For more information, please visit angusbucken.com.